Thanks, Cindy. That was quite an introduction. Um, yeah, and welcome everybody to the Slimstock portion of today's presentation. As Cindy said, uh, our title is Supercharged P21 with Slimstock and Be Ready for 2023. I honestly think that the, the name should be Supercharged Profit 21 with Slimstock and Be Ready for Anything. Um, if the last few years haven't taught us anything is we don't know what's coming. So it's better to be prepared yep. um, and be ready. So um, hey, as Dennis, said, can you, you can see my screen, I assume. Um, no, I can. can. Yeah, yep. yep. I have not Osmo background though. I am not seeing your screen. As, as Ryan figures that out. Yeah, um, yep, now got it. All right. Uh, as I said, uh, my name is Dennis Weir, and, and you meet, uh, you're seeing Ryan as well. Um, we represent Slimstock. Slimstock is a global organization. Uh, we provide software solutions to help with inventory optimization and purchasing optimization. Uh, we are, as I said, a global organization. We have uh, uh, individuals all over the, uh, the globe to help manage your, your business, uh, support you, your customers, and your vendors. Our software solution is called Slim4. It's, uh, as I said, designed to help you um, right-size your inventory. So as many of you noted, your biggest challenge is uh, stockouts. We're gonna help you get the right inventory at the right time at the right place. Go ahead, Ryan. Abs yep, absolutely. And uh, we are gonna look at, uh, and how we're going to do that, and there's a few things we're going to focus on, but one thing we do want to look at is, is having the optimal inventory levels um, that, that is really desired by your customers. Of course, you may have some customers that uh, they don't really care, but others are very demanding, and you know maybe it's a critical customer. You need to hold a little bit more stock, so um, we, can, we can help with that as well as trying to have the optimal order quantities um, in order to minimize your just overall operational costs. So that, that's something we're also going to look at. So um, we're constantly looking for that balance in uh, between the inventory, operational costs, and, and your customer service. And we're going to do that by trying to increase your performance with optimized inventory. So there's lots of ways we could do that for today's session. There's three main things I want to focus on. And within each of those three, there's a few additional steps so I can show you how. But those main Three being increasing sales by fine tuning your service levels. And when I mean service levels, I also let's say your target fill rate is really interchangeable there. Secondly, just improving your working capital with optimized stock. And as Dennis said, optimized really just means right tire that the stock is in the right place at the right time in the right quantities. And thirdly, we're going to work to improve some of your internal. Uh, pro processes. Oh, I guess I'll say it like a Canadian, if that's okay. Um, our customers uh, see many benefits uh, from, from using Slim 4, but we're going to highlight four here. Um, obviously, uh, the ultimate goal is to reduce stockouts, helping you again to have the right stock at the right time at the right place. And you will hear that several times through today's presentation, because it is kind of a, a core statement that we make. And with that, if you have the right stock, then you're going to obviously sell more. You're going to have uh, more inventory to support your business and your customers, and then hopefully uh, gain some uh, confidence from your customers, and they come back to you and, and buy more. Um, prior to COVID and you know the, the last few years of supply chain interruption, a lot of organizations were focused in on you know, going streamlined, um, going efficient, just having enough inventory. Um, but what we've seen over the last few years is a switch from just in, uh, just in time inventory to just in case inventory. Organizations have now got to the point where they didn't mind carrying a little extra inventory because they weren't sure when they were going to get it or if they were going to get it. So they were willing to carry a little bit of inventory, but our software was going to help point that out to you. If you choose to, to run with a little extra inventory, that's fine, but we'll always point it out for you to, so you have it in the back of your, your mind. And then finally, um, the, the ability to improve efficiencies. 
Um, our solution is designed to help guide your planners and buyers to the uh, areas that need the most attention, the areas that have the greatest opportunity, and get them away from the day-to-day -day number crunching, uh, running reports, yeah, managing spreadsheets, and help them to become more efficient. So, go ahead, awesome. Ryan. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. All right, so the first thing that I want to focus on is increasing sales by fine-tuning your service levels. And as Dennis mentioned, um, also it's trying to keep customers, keep keeping uh, your customers happy by having the appropriate uh, stocking levels. So, cause it's, it's always cheaper to keep a customer than to get a new one. So we're gonna do this in three ways. Again, there's maybe there's other ways we could do this, but this is, this is what I wanna focus on for increasing sales by fine tuning the service levels. First, let's identify what items are important. Secondly, let's then go differentiate our target service levels based upon the items that we consider important. And then thirdly, let's go and let's, let's run some simulations. Let's do some analysis to see what the financial impact is in that change of those service levels. So first, we're going to identify what items are important. How are we going to do this? Well, we can determine which items are important by conducting an ABC analysis. And I'm sure most of you have heard of Wilfredo Pareto and the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, um, which states that 80% of outcomes are normally due to 20% of the causes in the, you know, for a normal uh, distribution curve. So many companies uh, may feel this where 20% of their customers make up for 80% of their sales. The chart I'm showing represents a typical ABC Pareto where um, that, that Again, lots of businesses could see where a small percentage of items, that's those I'm showing in orange, make up for the major, <clears throat> excuse me, make up for the majority of the sales volume. And a long uh, tail that's shown in blue where there are lots of items uh, that are uh, making up uh, very little uh, in sales volume, but you have just tons and tons of SKUs. And that's, you know, of course, not uh, very helpful or impactful. Um, in a positive sense. Um, so Slim4 can do an ABC analysis to identify the items your organization deems important. And really the purpose of this ABC analysis is to logically structure your assortment and identify priorities within it. Once you've categorized your assortment by importance, you can implement more optimal inventory strategies based upon the ABC status. Furthermore, it will ensure your business focuses the investment and priorities in the areas that will have the biggest impact on the business. Some questions to possibly take back to your supply chain teams and sales teams are, do we have an ABC analysis or do we just see a top you know, 10 products or top you know, percent of products that we focus on? That may not be enough and not enough granularity. How often is this reviewed and updated? So this could be you know, very different practice if you only review it once every 12 months. Also, are you currently having to do this in a spreadsheet you know, manually and it takes you know, all sorts of time and could be prone to errors? Does this differ seasonally? We don't want to be overstocking expensive products in periods when you don't need them. You know, maybe you could just wait longer and then order just a few months before the appropriate time instead of holding on a bunch of stock that just hangs out in the warehouse for most of the month or excuse me, most of the month, most of the year. Are you measuring uh, that, you know, this type of ABC to get a competitive advantage? You know, looking at sales is obvious, but should you also be reviewing order lines to ensure your business is getting enough traffic? And uh, also is your ABC looking forwards? A forecasted ABC can be very different to a historical ABC. So we can use SLIM4, as, as I mentioned, to quickly do a two-factor ABC analysis. This means we can determine our criteria, whether it be, and this is where I'm showing one uh, criteria at the moment, uh, whether it be sales revenue, sales quantity, margin, you could also have logistical units as well, boxes, pallets, et cetera. And then also incorporate information such as the number of order lines so that you focus on more than just one factor. And then of course, in SLIM4, we're gonna bring those two together. So then you can actually see based upon those parameters, what is now the most important item? And then of course, your least important and you know, your, your um, priority just you know, jumps down from there. 
Furthermore, this analysis can be performed in just a few seconds, and the results can be cascaded throughout SLIM 4 as often as desired so that planners know which items are most important, and perhaps most importantly, everyone is planning towards the same goal. Across your supply chain network, you may want to run an ABC analysis for all locations or differentiate the ABC profile by location, um, something that again, could take hours to do or you know, be very difficult to replicate across locations can be done just in, in a few seconds. So now that we've identified the items that are important, we can proceed to further segment our inventory by deciding the target service level for each ABC classification. And again, what I mean by each ABC classification is just literally each box here. So for our AA items, they're very important. We could have a very high target service level. For maybe our BBs, our CB and BC, not that important. And especially our CC, we could have a lot lower target service level. So having a higher target service level for important items will help you to have fewer stockouts. However, increasing the target fill rate for all your products could have a huge impact on your bottom line. Thus, we want to differentiate the target service level by the ABC class. For unimportant items categorized in the CC group, and again, that's shown in orange, um, lowering the target service level could free up some capital. The higher the target fill rate, the higher the buffer stock that will be needed in order to account for the fluctuations in demand. And this is another place where we can also help uh, with efficiencies. So we're going from the, the, the target service level and also how safety stock ties into that. You do not have to manually calculate your buffer stock as you know, some of you may be doing today. Slim4 does it uh, for you based upon the target service level and just a few other factors. Perhaps you're currently calculating this on a monthly or quarterly basis. Slim4 calculates the buffer stock every day. And of course, if I jump into Slim4, and I'm looking at a specific SKU or specific item, and I want to you know, adjust some inventory parameters, I can immediately see the change in the buffer stock. And that's something I'll, I'll give an example of. In figure one, we, sh uh, we see the, the blue bars showing the demand history. And we can see there's lots of fluctuations month to month. The fluctuations are considered when we calculate the buffer stock needed for the target service level. In figure two, we can see that due to the fluctuations, if we plan at a 90% target service level, and that's what's indicated by this dotted line with the 90%, then we'd only need to expect to, or excuse me, we'd only expect to capture 90% of that fluctuating demand moving forward. If we were to try for a 99% target service level, then we would need much more buffer stock to account for those fluctuations. The impact on buffer stock can be a lot larger than you may expect, and that's what we're going to look at uh, in the next slide. And what I mean by that is by setting a, a really high uh, target service level um, that could create a, a lot of buffer stock needed. So we're just going to make sure you're, you're really aware um, and, and actually just see that on the next slide. So this is that exact uh, example, the stock impact of increasing, of increasing the target service level and thus affecting the amount of safety stock or buffer stock that's needed. So if we were to increase our target service level from 85 to 87%, we would go from only stocking 22 pieces to 26 pieces. So on my X axis, I've got my target service level. My Y axis is just my overall inventory position. So by increasing just 2% from 85 to 87, I've got around a four, four um, buffer stock uh, or four units uh, increase in my buffer stock that's needed. If we were to plan this item, let's say at a 95% target service level, then increase that to 97, then we would go from 62 pieces to 105 pieces. Thus, as the target service level increases, the safety stock needed can increase greatly. And also on this graph, we don't even see it, but if we wanted to just go to 99%, which nothing wrong with 99%, I will, I will be doing that in some, uh, in, in, in one of the ABC classes I'll be, show, I'll be showing. Um, but that's not even shown on the graph. So that would probably be, you know, 130 or something like that. So it's, it's quite, quite an increase. So now I'm just going to give a demonstration of, of pretty much what I've just gone over um, to put it into practice. We're going to look at what items um, are important or also how do we determine um, let's, you know, what is important 
we'll see the items that ultimately come from that analysis, and then we can differentiate our service levels. All right. So first for finding what items are important, that is what I'm doing now. And I'm doing an ABC analysis in Slim4. So I've got a, we can have multiple profiles. So again, if you have one ABC analysis that's appropriate for maybe your central distribution center, but then you have a different type of ABC analysis for a smaller location, or you, know, you just wanna run that separately. So that way, you know, that, that data is kind of being weighed appropriately. Um, you're not letting it, the huge sales from your central location, you know, way, um, just overshadow the importance of those items that are in a smaller location. So this is something I'm doing uh, just for my central uh, warehouse. But I can look forward again if I want to uh, look at uh, forecast or do this on history. And as mentioned previously, we do have all sorts of criteria we can look at. And these are just a few examples. If I wanted to look at just my units or even boxes, volume, et cetera, to um, for some of my parameters for my ABC analysis. But in this case, I'm gonna do it off of sales price. Furthermore, I can even define my limits where if I wanna say my top 80% of sales are gonna be my A items and my top 80% of order lines are also my A items, I can run with that. But if I wanted to change this to 75 uh, or, or whatever, I can actually do that. And just, just for fun, I will make that change. If my math will allow. Awesome. I've made a little change. I'm just now going to click a simulate button. Slim4 is going to quickly crunch some numbers and do it a lot faster than we could um, in a spreadsheet, even though nothing wrong with spreadsheets. I even have a Microsoft Excel t-shirt. I, I like Excel, but we can do it uh, a, a little bit faster and more uh, effectively. So I've run this uh, simulation and now I'm getting uh, really the meat of the info where I get those, those ABC classes that we mentioned earlier, my AA items being the ones that are most important, and then also my CC items, uh, those that really are my least important. So just uh, I'll go over just a few data points quickly as an example. So for example, my AA items, I have um, at my central location, I've got 143 SKUs or 143 items that have average weekly sales of 1.3 million. They're um, generating almost 8,000 order lines each week. And my average stock on hand is about $2.7 million. So we could compare that with something such as, let's say, our CC items, where I've got almost 3,000 items that's only generating $50,000 in sales uh, weekly. Um, and the stock position is it's normally about half a million dollars of stock. So there's a lot of stock not generating uh, that much sales where we're being a little bit more efficient with um, my AA items. I want to take this uh, one step further and actually see what those items are because of course we get the big picture and understanding great we have some AA items that's nice but if you'd like to further kind of dial in and actually see those specific items from this uh, this simulation we could do that and that's where I've got this list I can I can run through these items check all sorts of data points um, of, of course, adjust any inventory parameters that's needed, and then also run through those other ABC classes as I see fit. But the point is, we've we've determined what we think is important, and then if we like these, uh, if if we like this information, we think this is a great way to move forward. We can then cascade these results back through Slim4 and just commit this uh, simulation, saying yes, this is this is what uh, we think is. Um, how we wanna kind of measure our inventory from a what's important perspective. And then we can also take that information and then push that back to P21. So you've also got your updated ABC class in P21. Then to take it to really the, the uh, final level that I mentioned uh, in, in the slide deck is now we'll go and actually differentiate our target service levels at each group. Because for example, there may be some CC items that people didn't really realize that they were planning at a much higher target service level than they should be. So that's where we can go play with the target service levels um, at each of these groups and see if there's uh, you know, any nice financial impact. So that's what we're gonna do. 
So again, I've got multiple profiles that I could select if I want to do this, you know, at one location, I'm, I've got my ABC um, uh, classes, you know, differentiate a certain way, or maybe it, I've got some branches that I need to do it another way. Maybe I've got stores, et cetera. But in this case, I'm just going to do this at our central distribution center. So I've got various criteria. Again, I can do this on, but my point with showing this screen is I can actually go and differentiate those specific service levels, just like we showed in, in the slide. So for my AA items, I want to have this at, let's say, 99%, so high target service level. Um, for A, B, and, and some other items, I'm just going to make it a little bit less. But then those C, C items, the ones that are just not very important, where we had about, uh, seemed almost a half a million dollars, there's 470000 or something uh, dollars in stock. Um, I'm going to lower that target service level, and ideally that will also lower the buffer stock, as we saw, mentioned earlier, the, the impact of the target service level and buffer stock. So I can make changes as needed, but I, I like this. I'll just go ahead and hit save, and then we'll simulate this. Again, Slim4 is going to crunch the numbers, and then it's going to give me a nice uh, simulation to look at. And then depending on the results of the simulation, if this is something I want to move forward with, we can do that. So now I've got the data. Okay, fantastic. So my I've, uh, on the left side where I've got group, this is uh, our ABC uh, groupings that, that we've, we've been talking about. So my AA items, in this case, for, at my central location, it's saying currently I've got 97 items. And what we're looking for here is, is pushing them to a 99% target service level. I've got for, um, additional information about what this is going to do to our buffer stock, what is this going to do to our average stock, and even the calculated days on hand. So I can see, um, yeah, what, what's, what's some financial impacts here? Um, just to quickly go over what's the difference in the rule impact and actual impact, because the actual is a little bit uh, a better payoff um, in, in, the, in this example, but with the rule impact, what we're looking at is based upon the current rule set that we have. So again, this is a simulation, but there, in Slim4, there's already some rules in place, you know, what the AA items may have a certain target service level, those CC items may already have a target service level. We're gonna look at what that current rule set is compared with this simulated rule set. And in this case, um, even for our AA items, we could actually free up just a little bit of cash, which is nice. Um, and even the same thing across several um, several different uh, ABC classes. And we're also going to be comparing with this rule impact our theoretical optimum stocking levels. So what this does is just say, if for any of these ABC classes, if you had the correct amount of stock for the current target service levels that you already have, this is what it would look like. And that's what is, is current. But then if we compare that with the simulation, the simulation is more looking at those new target service levels that we just ran. Now that can be just a bit confusing and so that whatever, but what I'm gonna do is now jump into actual impact where it actually looks at what are we doing today and what do, what do we simulate? So that makes it super duper easy for just you know anybody to, to dive in. So um, for example, on the AA side, I've got my current stock on hand where I'm actually a bit more than really what Slim4 thinks I should have on average. So I'm, I'm, uh, I've got $250,000 difference between what I actually have and what Slim4 uh, says I should have. So that's where we could get some money back um, by you know, uh, actually stocking at the appropriate levels. And another grouping I want to call out here is my CA items once more, um, where my current on hand is $420,000, but my simulated average from Slim4 is $20,000. $20, a huge difference of 400,000. So something's been going on there. Maybe someone is not following, you know, a systematic uh, reorder point that we're getting that Slim4 is calculating. They just keep trying to manually override, or maybe they're only, you know, doing uh, purchasing through through uh, P2, P21 and not um, letting Slim4, you know, do the, some of these nice calculations for them. So um, there's there's definitely a, a bit of a, a discrepancy, and as there's even you know big potential for some some cost savings. I know if I were a planner or a planning manager, I would love to be able to do an analysis like this and deliver um, a sizable cost savings that I could put on my resume, you know, for and, and look good for my next performance review. 
So having said all that, I'm going to jump back into the slide deck and we'll look at uh, now trying to improve working capital with optimized stock. So this is another way we can supercharge um, P21 um, is, is, is by um, improving the working capital with optimized stock. Optimized stock again, right stock at the right place at the right time. And as you all know, with, with the results from the poll, having the right stock um, is key at, you know, from, from having uh, stock outs. Because we all know it can be very frustrating for the, for the people that said they, they are having stock outs. Um, if you hear in your organization that maybe sometimes they're low on space in, in your warehouse and yet you're still having stock outs, it's like, that doesn't make sense. Why? But it's because it's you don't have the right product mix. There's too much, for example, of those, let's say, CC items. But then those fast movers, the important ones, you, you just don't you're, you just don't have enough on hand and you're not, not planning at the right target service level. So that, you know, of course, is quite frustrating. So to improve our working capital, there are three steps I'd like to focus on. One of these steps we've actually already done. It carries over from, from uh, what we did earlier with fine tuning our, uh, our uh, service levels and, um, and, and overall increasing our sales. Um, so that, that's nice. Um, we've already differentiated our, our, our target service levels. Um, next, uh, we're also going to look at reducing excess stock and then also reviewing items that are, that are end of, at end of life. So you can imagine even just in this, uh, this picture of this warehouse, and I actually, I've, I've been very fortunate to work in supply chain even since I was 15. Um, I was working, I didn't know it was supply chain then. I just, it was just my, my job um, working in a warehouse. Um, but I'm sure anyone that's spent you know, plenty of time in, in warehouses, you know how uh, you know, dusty and some boxes can get, you know, that like things are never moving. And why do we have a full rack of something that's just like never moving? You can imagine if some of these have just been hanging out there forever, it's unfortunate. So we're going to try to uh, capture, you know, or give you alerts on some of these items as they're, as they're slowing down in their sales um, cycle and even uh, doing, doing our best to just capture um, and notify excess stock. So that way, you know, people are no longer, um, manually setting a reorder point. We've got a dynamic order, a reorder point that Slim4 is calculating and ultimately just letting you buy the right quantities as well at the right time. So uh, I'm going to focus a little bit just on uh, um, excess stock. So as Dennis mentioned, um, you know, we're, we're going to always be looking for excess stock uh, systematically in Slim4, but you know, we're not going to force you to not have it. You know, it's, it's, if your company needs to have some, it's totally cool. It's totally fine. But, you know, that, that um, excess stock is, you know, stock that's hanging out. It's just money in a different form. It's just in the form of a good sitting on the shelf. And that, you know, when we're in a tough time, like, uh, you know, kind of currently in a recession or something similar, um, you know, having um, less excess and having more of the of correct availability uh, or the right products on the shelf is, is always going to be helpful. Um, so we're always, as mentioned, always calculating for um, excess and this parameter is configurable. So we, we do want to fit your business need instead of just saying, this is how we do it, you know, deal with it. It's if, um, if we needed to change kind of what we do out of the box um, with uh, how we calculate um, or kind of what that calculation is, we're happy to do that. Not a big deal. We, we want this all to, to, to work for you. Um, so, but nevertheless, once an item uh, or once the stock for an item reaches a systematically calculated threshold, We'll then have an exception um, or like a notification in our in, in Slim4 advising that there is excess stock, and that's really what I'm what I'm showing graphically. Um, we even have a, an exception for excess stock that has a purchase uh, open purchase order, that and that's what I'll actually show in just a just a bit. So this is actually even an example of that, um, where something could be ordered, and then eventually, of course, it's going to be delivered. But as that inventory level just keeps climbing and climbing, once we get to a certain threshold, um, we're going to say, hey, you need to move out that purchase order because you're actually at an a excess stock level. So um, we, we it's really Slim4 is, is consistently calculating that. So that's just a little bit about uh, excess stock. And then also I'm um, going to talk about uh, items that are at the end of life. So Slim4 does pr um, support your product's life cycle. By being proactive once an item starts to uh, slow down in its sales cycle. We have a demand class assigned to each item that is based upon the quantity and frequency of sales. And I, and I will show more later what a demand class is. 
as sales slow down for a given item, they can go from one demand class to another. As that happens, we can review these slowdowns um, in various areas um, and also even in our management by exception dashboard. Secondly, we have reports that show um, items that are approaching the end of life. Um, for example, you can look at items that have no sales in the last six months or even 12 months, or if you wanna change that number to whatever best fits your business, we'll do that as well. If you have stock on hand for these items, um, you can choose to no longer stock these or even you know, sell out the safety stock. We've got all sorts of controls as items um, really go to, in that phase out end of life uh, um, portion of, of their life cycle. Also, perhaps you even have demanded another location in, in your supply chain. Slim4 does provide multi warehouse visibility. So you can um, perhaps put that slow stock um, in the right place so that it has a chance of being consumed. Uh, maybe in, in an example I'm going to show, we could have an item that just has no demand at a warehouse and you have some pieces hanging in that warehouse. No one's bought it in a year or two. Maybe no one's going to buy it, but then you have a different you know, part of the country where people are consistently buying that. Maybe instead of you know, your next purchase order coming from your supplier, or you still could ship a few pieces from, from a location where you, you, you've got extra. And that's what I'm going to show now. So first we are going to look at excess and then we are going to look um, at uh, items as they're slowing down. So I've got a few places to look uh, at uh, excess and this is, this is an area called our product classification dashboard. This just lets you get a, a quick look at like what's going on at, uh, with all sorts of different things, whether it's forecast exceptions, um, your different demand classes that I mentioned earlier or even just some inventory exceptions. But this uh, being a, uh, a high level area, this is where you don't have to necessarily take any action. We have an area for that where people go and take action. This just lets you get some visibilities. And also um, instead of having to go and run a report in you know, some, some reporting tool that maybe takes a little bit a while, you have to log in separately, you, you can do this from here. So if I wanna look at something, for example, as simple as excess stock, I've got uh, where in, in just a, two seconds, I can go and say, let's look at excess stock. Uh, furthermore, if I actually wanted to try to, you know, dial that in and say, let's also look at excess stock. That's also, you know, uh, let's say our CC items, those ones that are least important, I could do that. I could select our CC items and then inspect those. But just in, the, in this scenario, I'll just say, let's just look at our um, just uh, items that have excess. So I've done that. I've got a, a um, a table that kind of acts similarly to Excel. I can sort and filter this as needed. Um, so some of these actually have no demand, but stock on hand. So that's that's a bit um, you know unfortunate. So we need to um, you know dive into this and figure out are are these items that maybe just we've already purchased like the initial um, minimum order quantity from the supplier and we just haven't started selling yet, or is this something that actually is at the end of life? So um, in the product classification area. This, this dashboard, um, we can you know get to this data, but our to-do dashboards where we can even make it a, a, even a bit more granular and really uh, find what the appropriate action is. Um, uh, Ryan, so I don't I, mean to interrupt. Yeah. Um, um, yes, sir. You did say that uh, excess is uh, configurable, but how yep. is it calculated currently? I mean, explain to everybody how it's calculated currently or out of the box. Yeah, you got it. So at the moment, what we're doing, and I'll even, I'm, I'm going to look for an item that actually has some average demand. So I'll show you an inventory card, but then I'll, I'll just give you what you're looking for. So here's, here's our inventory card, and it's saying you've got excess stock. We've got all sorts of calculations, but I'll jump into what Dennis is actually saying. How do we know or what, like, what's the calculation for excess? What we're looking at is the buffer stock plus two times the average demand. Or, so we have two options and we're actually looking for whichever is the higher. The second is two, the buffer stock plus uh, two times the minimum order quantity. Whichever of those is higher, that is what our excess threshold is. So once we've met that and exceeded it, that's where we're at an excess stocking position. So I'm in an inventory card uh, for this specific item. And I can see that I've got an order level uh, of uh, 7,333 pieces. But I've already got a lot of stock on hand. Cool, that's fine. Stock on hand is 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 nice. Um, but then 
even though I've got 10,000 pieces on hand, I'm not, so I'm not down to when I should all be placing an order, but then I've got 7,000 more pieces on order that somebody was not paying attention or, or somebody was, they're, they're not following what they're, you know, supposed to be doing. They're like using their, their gut, um, you know, kind of their, their going with their gut instead of, uh, um, you know, actually doing math or maybe they were doing, you know, manual calculations and made a goof. Um, but in, in Slim 4, you don't have to make these manual calculations. It, um, it lets you know what the reorder point is and it automatically calculates that. So um, that's another efficiency we can help with and ideally make it so you don't have so much excess stock. While I've got this up and it, I will continue with the, the examples I've, I've kind of already teed up, but while I've got it here, I can show quickly the impact um, on just a specific SKU if we're changing the inventory planning parameters on the service level. So I can see my buffer stock and the buffer stock again is, is, is based upon a few factors. Um, one of those being the lead time, my, um, my base forecast, but one of the biggest drivers is my service level. So if you all can see it's at 1,943 um, is, is my pieces is my buffer stock, but I'm at a super high target service level. So this could be an item that is a top seller and it actually is an AA item. So it is one of our most important ones, but just to see what that impact is, if we decrease this, I'm just gonna say, what if we go to, let's say a 95% uh, uh, target service level, and all of a sudden I've dropped down over 1200 pieces in my buffer stock. So if we have uh, just tying into what I was saying earlier with finding what's important, and then segmenting the, the target uh, service levels for each of those and inventory classifications or ABC classifications, we can really start to plan at the appropriate buffer stock um, for, for these, these items. And that really can free up a lot of cash in your organization because some people may keep buying when they're doing um, th you know, these type of activities manually. They could consistently be over buying and you know, have, they have just a tons of buffer stock that really isn't needed. So that's a little bit about how we can get to some excess. I'm going to show you now, and of course I gave an example on the, the safety stock, um, but now I'm actually going to show you our to-do dashboard and give an example of um, actually looking at um, an item that has uh, excess, but also has an open purchase order. Because again, we're needing the right stuff uh, in our warehouse. We don't need to keep you know, bringing in the wrong stuff. We've already got too much of it. So. Um, what I can do is actually even focus in on my demand planning activities. And so, boom, let's look at some demand planning activities. And the one I want to look at, actually it's supply plan, sorry. There we go, supply plan. And it's excess stock with an open PO. So that's what I'm going to look at. And this is something um, that, that Slim for the way we've got it currently set up. It's saying, hey, this is, this is pretty urgent and it's important. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in on this item. All I'm doing here is, is or also whatever item I, I select, that's where I get these cards that are showing up. And this is where I have all of the controls for a single individual item. I can go and make all sorts of changes to really uh, fine tune our inventory planning parameters, fine tune a forecast, do all sorts of stuff. But what I wanna do here is try to push out um, some, some purchase orders because this, again, I've got an order level that's at a certain amount. And we've got way more stock than that order level. And then we've got a tons of items already on the way. It just doesn't make sense. Somebody was not letting a system, you know, do its work. Instead, they were, you know, did some manual calculations, made it, you know, goofed up somehow. Um, so what I want to do is try to push out um, a PO. So I can even see uh, all the POs that are going to be coming in from like a, an inbound um, pipeline perspective. And that's actually what I'm showing now. And so I'm supposed to have 900 pieces coming in this week, 2000 next week, and then uh, 2300 in a few weeks. Um, I'm going to guess that maybe these 2300 is probably my best bet that I could try to push out, you know, depending on the lead time, depending on my logistical network. Maybe this is something that's got a better chance of being pushed out uh, compared to this 2700 pieces that it might just be, you know, not very far away um, in its in its transit to my location. So I'm going to just go and look at my placed purchase orders and I could say, hey, those 2,300 pieces, I could email um, this information to my supplier or my appropriate logistics partner and say, push these out. So sorry, we goofed up. We don't need them yet. Can you even, you know, is it possible to take them back or not? But 
we don't need them. So long story short, um, we're able to uh, try to push out a PO because we're in an excess stock position and it's going to push us even more into an excess stock position. So that's about excess. Um, if we have a better control of excess, of course, that's going to increase working capital because that's just dollars sitting on the shelf with extra goods that just does not need to be there. But now we're going to look at items that are going into uh, the end of their life cycle. So uh, I've got a few places to do that. One of those being um, a place called Anomalies to Investigate. So what I can do is actually go and look at, let's say items that are currently stocked that have uh, the last 12 months, there's no demand. And, and again, we can, we can create as many of these types of uh, selections as needed. But in this case, again, I'm looking at my product uh, phase out category and we'll go with this one. But again, if it needs to be a different amount of months, that's totally fine. So here I've got some items that um, it says I've got 128 pieces on hand. I have no sales in the last 12 months. If I wanted to actually go and quickly check specifically for when was the last sale, that would be nice to know. I can even go and see my sales transactions. I'm trying to open it up and see everything. And it was in uh, 2021, it was June, 2021. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a year and a half, I get, yeah, a year and a half um, since we last sold this. I, I guess we're probably not gonna sell this here again. Um, so it'd be nice to get rid of this and definitely not buy it anymore. I've got controls and some for if I wanna you know, say, we're not gonna buy this anymore, set this to not stock. I could do that. But what I'm gonna show is let's go and look and see if we have other warehouses that may have demand. And by golly, we actually do. So what I've done is I've added a view where I can see all my other warehouses and let's say, uh, you know, in at our AMS location, uh, we have an average demand of 633 pieces and zero on hand right now and actually zero on order. So why not do a, uh, let's do a, tra a transfer order and try to get these pieces uh, that are at my LON warehouse moved over as quickly as possible um, to the right location. So we can try to stop stocking this at a location that's just not selling it and put it in the right place. And by doing that, again, we're going to release or improve our working capital by taking goods and turning them into cash. It's, it's, it's so helpful. So um, yeah, and uh, that was um, a little bit about that product life cycle decline. And um, also with our, our demand classes that I did mention for a moment, we do have um, them shown here where we've got items that are most frequent selling. They're selling a few items every day, all the way down to that same thing I just showed where really it's, it's now at our all demand zero. It's gone 12 months, has no demand. Um, we need to do something with it. And so if someone wanted to run a report and say, hey, let's look at all of our slow items that um, you know are still um, you know, CC or any of these C classes, they, they, could, they could go and do that and you know, create a report and kind of dive in and analyze you know, what's what's needed here all right um so that was a bit about um improving our working capital with the uh, optimized stock and uh, the last piece i'm going to um, go over is just improving some internal uh processes and um, or processes as i normally would say but i live in seattle and so i hear people say process all the time from that's how they say it in canada um so the, the, in order to improve internal uh, processes, we have a comprehensive management by exception tool located in Slim4. That's what we did look at. This gives an, an area where planners and buyers uh, will review actions that are needed to keep the supply chain running. Of course, they'll still place orders as needed. They've got you know, other daily activities, but having an alert for a potential stock out before it happens can be a game changer. The same can be said when the exact scenario I showed, when you have too much stock and need to limit the number of inbound POs on uh, a specific item that's already got too much stock. Secondly, by making the data easy to find and easy to work with, people can maximize their efforts and create lasting improvements. Without having to jump through lots of hoops, you can get to where you need to be and ultimately make the right decisions. So uh, this is the, the, the example of the management by exception dashboard. We already looked at this. Um, so you, you pretty much get what's going on here. We also um, have got a little area. If you're a manager and you want to see, you know, specific things of 
um, you know, let's, I want to look for my team and see how my team is doing on my demand planning activities. And just in case, make sure you all can see that for our demand planning activities. Um, you know, maybe if all of a sudden there's a lot more exceptions than maybe you expected, something's going on here. Why is our demand fluctuating so much? There's, you know, something we need to do. So um, that's a, just a little bit about, you know, what it looks like, a little bit of the idea behind it. But then also, this is set up um, to have various activities and, and they're all broken up into categories. So the individuals can quickly navigate um, to the activities that um, truly require their attention. This creates a repeatable process and that can be rolled across your, across your team, um, rolled out and it's, it is scalable. Um, so lastly, I'm gonna look at uh, how, you know, just getting to information more quickly. Uh, that's one of the things I showed um, where we had this product classification dashboard is where it almost gives you a look under the hood of what's going on with all sorts of SKUs or really all your SKUs. Um, you know, if, if normally someone said, hey, give me an, a report of all of our slow moving items where we have excess stock and someone's revised our forecast in the last, you know, uh, X number of you know, months or whatever, you're like, oh, crap. Well, I don't have my SQL certification yet, so this may take a second. Or you can you like do it here in three clicks and you're good to go. So also, um, you know, if you buy, if there's something that's appropriate for your business, um, you could even go in and make some selections in here and actually turn that into a to-do item to do in our dashboard. And then lastly, with reducing time uh, spent in decision making, um, that is of course something that we do um, a lot. But I'm just going to give you a quick exercise. So imagine. In your current organization, if you're doing the following, if you were to pick five items from your product assortment and then you invited you know, three of your favorite planners um, to, to your desk and you say, okay, I need you all to do something for me. Adjust the following parameters. We're going to go delivery time or really our lead time is going to go up by a month. Uh, service level is going to go from 95 to 97% and increase the sales uh, by 20%. You can even say for the next you know, three months. Then ask them separately what's that impact and how much they order for those five items. And then let's see how long does this take and you know is, is it is it easy to do how many of the answers are the same so is this like you know, um, is it scalable because people are actually you know doing doing it correctly asking again uh if this is uh is something they can do the next day and then can they do this for a lot of other items i imagine that'd be pretty tough but that's something we do all the time and we're and we're super happy to to help with very very easy to do so next, Dennis will uh, run us through a return on investment calculator very quickly um, to uh, see if you know this is something or if, if uh, Slim Stock and Slim Four, uh, if we're partners that you'd like to consider working with, we're, we're happy to do so. Uh, and I'll uh, turn it over to Dennis for a moment once I find my uh, browser. <laughs> yeah, uh, the return on investment is actually one of our pillars or our promises to our customers. We guarantee. Uh, an ROI within the first year. And, and most of the time, it's much less than that. But we actually have two ROI calculators. This one that, that Ryan is showing, we'd be happy to, to let you take a look and then share a, a URL so you can uh, play around with it uh, in the comfort of your own office um, and make the changes. And then we have one that goes a little deeper into the subject and really gets you some fine, uh, fine answers. But uh, one of the things I always tell people to do with these is, yeah, it's, it's always great to shoot for the stars. And, and we all know what our ultimate goals are. But what if we kind of just trim that back a little bit and, and started playing with, say, half of our ultimate goal or maybe even a third? And you're going to find that those small incremental changes can provide some pretty impressive uh, gains for your organization. And that gets a lot of our customers going to realize that, hey, yeah, I mean, you know, we're doing this, but maybe we're not doing this efficiently enough to move us forward. And with tools like ours, we can get you to that, uh, that point. And this, this uh, simulation, this ROI tool can show you what's possible. So, um, awesome. yeah. And I've also got Dennis's contact info if anybody ever wants to reach out. Um, so it's just dAware at slimstock.com, or you can also just go to slimstock.com, and um, they'll it's, it's pretty easy to uh, if you want to sp you know, speak with someone. There's a button, and you'll see Dennis's pretty face pull up, and um, happy to get a conversation going. So yeah, I know I be, went a bit. Oh, go ahead, Dennis. No, I was gonna say I'd be more than happy to walk anybody through a uh, yeah yeah ROI. 
Yeah. And I know I went a, a bit long. My apologies for that. In a, a previous run through, I did it in like 30 minutes and that time I did it in like 45 plus. Um, so uh, any, any questions? If we want to turn that over to Cindy. Yes, I do have some questions and no worries. Thank you for, for going over all that. I know that it's hard to, to kind of talk just the right pace. So no worries at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so question, uh, how does Slim4 deal with changing lead times? Yeah, so something we can do with changing lead times. I know that was a, 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 a terrible problem, especially at the beginning, beginning of COVID, during COVID. What we can do in Slim4 is actually measure all of the um, the lead times of specific deliveries, if we want to look at you know the previous three months and actually measure what's actually happening to the stated lead time from your supplier, we can then give you um, you know the results of what's the actual versus you know your estimated lead time, and then you can plan around that in case your um, logistics partner suppliers performing a not to the lead time, maybe you need to incorporate a few days extra into your um, planning parameters. That way you're not always running short. So that's that's something we can easily do. Yeah, and I think the key there is just letting everybody know that it's dynamic. So it, it can react to your lead time as they actually occur. And so mm -hmm. the system then buys accordingly. So yep. as lead times grow, it starts to buy accordingly. And as they come back to normal, you're not still buying based on, you know, 90 days lead times. So it's now, you know, 70 or 65 or whatever it is. So, yeah. Perfect. Um, awesome all right. Business. How are companies able to get the 40% increase in efficiency? Yeah, I've got, uh, or Dennis, you want to handle that or I can do it, either one. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the, the best way to, to touch on that is to, talk about an example that we had and it was actually a profit 21 customer that uh, uh, started using our software and when they uh, first came uh, on board with us they were a growing organization so they had plans to grow their business and uh, one of the areas they planned to do is uh, bring on a few more uh, planners and once they got using uh, slim four and and working with it they realized they, uh, they didn't need to bring on two additional uh, people. So the, the people they had were you know, able to uh, do their jobs more efficiently as the business increased and ha not have to take on the additional um, head count as well. And they could use that in other places. So. Yep. Yep. And, we, and we also, and, so, and that's, that's the outcome and, and how we even, get there is by giving you know people the appropriate controls so that they can really fine tune their inventory planning parameters and that's you know part of inventory optimization so that they're actually buying at the right levels and instead of having to do lots of manual adjustments and manual uh, calculations if you will um, they're letting by 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 setting up slim four correctly and then you know having certain assumptions on you, know, you just using you know what's what's my lead time um, you know, I've got my average demand that's been calculated based upon last month's sales and, you know, the, the forecast, et cetera. Um, then what, what do I need to buy instead of people having to try to figure out themselves? A lot of the, the work is done for you. And that's where I try to think slim for sometimes it's almost like you've got a test, like your job as a planner is you're taking a test, but you've got all the answers and that's, what's great. They've got uh, quick access to the answers. And so they can really, um, you know, get uh, the activities done a lot more quickly. And that's the big part of about getting efficiency gains. All right, we had one other question come in. Uh, do you do anything with machine learning? Yep, absolutely we do. Um, so I'll handle this if, if that's okay, Dennis. Uh, so something that we, we do is something called an outlier detection. And there's there's um, some other things, but this is, this is uh, something that just came out in a, another recent webinar um, um, on uh, machine learning where we're trying to look at uh, specific, uh, you know, customer transactions and understand that maybe, you know, spikes in for one customer um, is, uh, it makes sense where if the, um, the machine learning algorithms actually look at our history and understand that, yeah, that actually used to happen a long time ago. So for this customer, it's really not that big of an outlier, but if that same type of spike for a different customer, maybe at a different warehouse, it is. So it's really trying to take the data a little bit uh, at a deeper level um, to you know, drive the appropriate 
reactions in SLIM4 and also, you know, guide the appropriate behavior by the people, uh, you know, behind the wheel driving. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, Ryan and Dennis. We appreciate you jumping on here today and going over this and answering those questions. Um, I will go ahead and put up the next poll. We'll take a short break and meet back here at 5 Eastern. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you.